Afghanistan. War in the Hindu Kush. Mujahideen lay in ambush in the strategic Salang Pass. Most understood the shock value of the ambush, relying on it as their basic tactic. They were reasonably good at this form of action, usually targeting oil convoys as they hurried south to Kabul. This time, Afghan troops, whose lorry has been stopped, prepare to surrender. The Mujahideen order them to throw down their weapons. A shaven head indicates a young conscript. If he doesn't join the rebels, he'll be escorted to a Pakistani refugee camp. In their War of the Roads, the Mujahideen destroyed thousands of trucks along this vital supply route, causing severe fuel shortages in the capital. Increasingly heavy air attacks softened up the guerrillas' positions. The rocket-propelled grenade was an optimistic anti-aircraft weapon. Flak narrowly misses a swooping Su-25. Finally, the Mi-24 gunships come in to suppress the guerrillas. These Soviet-designed 12.7mm Dashika heavy machine guns were a favoured anti-aircraft weapon. They claimed at least three helicopters and a fighter. Soviet helicopters had now acquired armor-plated protection, limiting the effectiveness of these weapons. After days of constant use, anti-aircraft fire became increasingly inaccurate. The defenders had fired so many rounds that they had worn out their gun barrels. The Soviets said they destroyed over 250 Mujahideen fortifications in three weeks of bitter fighting. Fuel air incendiaries were particularly effective, but Mujahideen supplies continued to reach hidden positions as the rebels regrouped. Some even received pre-prepared airline meals flown in from Saudi Arabia. The Mujahideen dug fresh networks of trenches and dugouts as others laid minefields out of sight of the new strongholds. The war's one set-piece battle had proved that they could be defeated, but their ability, like the Viet Cong, to regroup beyond national borders meant the Soviet and Afghan forces could not win an outright victory. <laughs> 